I have a ton of socks here to talk about, so I figured why not make a game out of it? Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to my 2023 sock tour. So I've done a few of these in the past. I did one in 2021 and another one in 2020. So it's been about two years since I have done this. And at that time, these two gallon Ziploc bags were only halfway full. So I've made a lot of socks between now and then. I actually have about five pairs of socks I recently finished during uh, sock week 2023 that I didn't even put in the top because we're gonna be playing a game today and I wanted to make it a little bit challenging for myself. Some of you may know that we are getting ready to leave on an epic road trip. We are gonna be traveling around the United States trying to go to a yarn store in all 50 states, which is why my challenge today is to identify 50 pairs of socks. I have more than that here. I don't know exactly how many, but I wanted to cap it at 50. And to make it even a little more challenging, I want to try to do this in just 15 minutes. So I did a little bit of math and I checked it twice, so I think I'm right on this. That boils down to about 18 seconds per pair of socks. So let me explain how it's gonna work here. You can play along with me. Let me pull these socks out. So essentially, I'm just going to pull out a pair of socks and show them to you here. And then I'm going to try to make a couple of guesses. I am going to give myself one point if I'm able to identify the dyer of the yarn and a second point if I'm able to identify the colorway. Most of my socks do not have a pattern. They're either just something that I have done, maybe vanilla with a fish lips kiss heel, or maybe like these have a little bit of ribbing on them, but also a fish lips kiss heel. So I'm not gonna do any pattern points. Maybe if the sock does have a pattern, I can get like a third bonus point for that. And I'm just gonna try to go as fast as I can. So if you wanna play along with me, maybe you're familiar with just dyers in general, or maybe you've been watching me make socks and share them on the podcast over the last several few several years. Um, so I don't know, some of you are so good at remembering things like that. I'm not really sure if I had to predict how well I'm going to do at this moment. I would say I'm probably gonna get like maybe 30 of these right. I would say a little more than 50%. There are going to be Ravelry project pages linked down below for all 50 of these socks or however many I get through. Because I've got to go through Ravelry anyway to check my work, I'll just pop them down below. So. There will be a Ravelry project page for each and every one of these socks. I've got to go through my project pages anyway to double check my work. So I'm going to compile, compile a nice long list of hopefully 50 socks or however many I can get to. Just as a warm up, these are not going to count towards the 50, but these I know are mustache yarns. And I think the colorway is called like apple picking or something like that. I remember buying this at DFW Fiberfest in 2019 maybe. Since I don't think I'm gonna be able to count while also trying to recall <laughs> all of these things, I'm gonna set a timer for, you probably can't see that, but I'll hold it up when I start it, um, seven and a half minutes. That will be the halfway point. We'll take a little break, count through, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my sock making, how it's developed over the past two years since I recorded the last video. So I'm trying not to look too much. I've got the first bag here in my lap. I say, let's start the timer and we can get this game a going. All right, first up we have, uh, I think this is called Lolo did it. I believe it's Lolo did it and it's maybe like Honey Dukes or something like that. One. <laughs> um, this one I can remember is called Color Run. These are so fun, right? These cute little shorty socks with like the missy matchy heels and the different ribbing. But I am blanking maybe Big Sky, I think. All right, next up, I believe this is more Lolo did it. Uh, I love the little pop of pink on these here. I used to do a lot of kind of like 60 row, I think 20 rows and 40 rows. I don't really do that anymore. I cannot remember this colorway name for the life of me. 
Okay, these are a little more recent. Um, this is last year's Sock Week 2023 colorway from the Little Wolf Knits, and it's called Sunrise, Sunset, Dawn, it's sunrise or something like that and this one is a pattern um, by summer lee it's got the fun stripes and the ribbing um, i'll put the project page down below so the pattern's in there too all right i have no idea literally no clue but these are very beautiful very speckly and uh i'll link the project page okay these ones I do know. These are from Sockmas, I believe last, was it last year? Okay, I was more confident than I thought. These are from Sockmas 2022, I think, and I believe it's Mint Rain hand dyed yarns. They're like a micro stripey. Oh, that might not be right. I, re I remember because there was two really fun mini skeins. So I did one in the rib and one down here that were very reminiscent of I think one was like candy. This one kind of reminds me of gingerbread. Well, it was a good try. <laughs> okay, these ones are from Malia Made It. I believe this is the Disney Princess colorway. Nice, really bright, bold stripes. And I did contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. And again, most of these are just fish lips kiss heel. These are nice and long, actually. Something I still need to do is go through and kind of try all these on and decide which socks I'm going to pick and keep and which ones I'm going to be giving away. Okay, these I actually do remember even though I made these quite a while ago. So these are from Leading Men Fiber Arts and this colorway is Yarn Hoarder. And I did an afterthought heel on these, which is interesting. I don't do that very often. The Yarn Hoarder has been away for many, many years and she just came back with a, um, like a Patreon sort of podcast. So check her out if you haven't seen it. All right, here's another one from Sock Week 2022 from last year. Um, this is Olive, I always get it wrong, Olive and Oliver, Olivia and, oh, I can't remember <laughs> right now. I always mix it up too when I was seeing it. And I want to say we called this Baby Shark. It's such a beautiful colorway though. And this one was called like Bellissimo. How do I remember that? Okay, this one is kind of itchy because these are a one-of-a-kind colorway and I feel like I can picture the label right now, but I cannot remember for the life of me who the dyer is, but these are so fun, so bright with like lovely blue speckles, kind of royally blue in there. They're awesome. Okay, these are some fun stripes and glitter. My friend Rebecca gave me this yarn. I remember that. I want to say it's Vesper and it's a kind of, it's like an autumn rainbow or something like that because it's got the orange and then the rainbow colors in here. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I did have a sparkly gray yarn that I thought paired so nicely with it. Oh, and another afterthought heel here, which is very interesting. Okay, these ones are actually my pattern and what did I call it? <laughs> I'm going to blank on my own. I think this is the... Um, Oh my goodness, I cannot remember. Something Lux, because I have another version that fades and everything. These are all different kinds of yarn. I'm actually holding mohair with several different colors. You can see it changes as it goes down the foot. And I cannot remember what they're called, but they do have, they're fun to make. They have a faux cable going down. You don't need a cable needle for it. You can use up your scrappies and they make really nice house socks because they're nice and toasty warm. Okay. These, I think, were also a Sockmas colorway. Sockmas is a make-along that we have been doing the past few years in December. I don't think we're going to do it this year, by the way. There's just too much going on. But I think these are from Tia's Terrific Threads, I believe. Oh, I'm going to feel so bad if I get this wrong. <laughs> this just goes to show how many socks are in here that I'm forgetting. Um, but yeah, this definitely looks very Christmassy. I really like the way that these came out. And again, another afterthought heel. I guess this is in, this is indicative of the self-striping yarns that it's just easier to put in an afterthought heel if there is no other uh, like contrast color. Okay, these ones are fun. These are Moon Glow Yarn Company. 
I think this was when Moon Glow like literally first started and this was Sock Week 2021, I believe. And this was the just like the Sock Week set. So it came with all these fun, bright colors. And this is a pattern, although I'm blanking, maybe color palette socks. I adapted it a little bit so I could put in my fish slips kiss heel, but these came out really, really fun. And they were very motivating to do with you know, the different color changing sections. Okay, we have our first commercial yarn in here. I wanna say that this is Opal. It's either Opal or Regia. And I don't know if they name their colors. So I'm just gonna say some numbers, 0864. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be linked in my Ravelry project page. But I did something really interesting here where I did like a super short, very tall rib, but super short socks. Oop, that's our halfway. Stop. We'll stop right here. So yeah, that's super interesting. Okay, let me see how many I have gone through. It hasn't actually been seven and a half minutes of film time here, but with me pausing in between and doing some other things there, we might have, uh, maybe we'll come in a little bit under our time. So let's see, I've got one, two, we can just speed this up. It is not great news. There are 15 <laughs> pairs of socks right here, which means to get to 50, I need to go through 35 socks <laughs> in the next seven and a half minutes. But before we get to that, let's take a little break and let's talk about sock knitting in general. If there's anyone out there who has been knitting or even crocheting socks for many years, or you could even pick anything like maybe sweaters or maybe blankets or something that you make within one category that you make a lot of. I don't know if there's many things quite like socks where you can just make and make and make and make and still use most of them. I don't, but <laughs> you could. Um, but when you're making a ton of one thing in a category, it does tend to lead into like trying new things and changing up your formula and changing up your the way you cast on or the way you um, knit the leg or the way that you um, do your heel or anything like that. And I've definitely found that my sock knitting has really grown and developed and changed with me over the years, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to give a sock tour. And I really want to go through my socks and just let go of a lot of them. I am, before I get back to the sock formulas, I'm curious, I would love to know um, any of your ideas for places to give socks away. I'm going to have to sort out and discard some of the socks that are just simply too worn for anyone else to use them. Sometimes when I wear my socks, they really will like felt on the bottom and they're just not comfortable for anyone to wear. I'm not going to give away socks that are super worn, but I have some socks in here that show no signs of wear because they've never been worn or maybe they've been worn once. So I would like to give those away. Um, so if you have any interest in socks and you wear about a women's size eight, you can send me an email and I will put you on my list. I'm going to be giving um, some socks away to viewers for sure but just know that like there's a chance that they have been gently worn but I wouldn't give you anything that's like really icky or anything like that and then for the socks that are super worn where can I find out where to donate to like a scrap fabric scrap place I've heard there's like fabric scrap recycling and most of these are wool nylon blends so I'm hoping that instead of just tossing them in the trash maybe they can be repurposed I don't know I probably need to slow down on my sock knitting or ramp up on my sock gift giving because I have way too many socks to that like I don't need this many for the way that I wear socks I have more socks made than I actually wear and that's just not needed. So back to sock making. My sock making has really changed in the last two years. In late 2021 and early 2022, I was working on developing my perfect fit. So I was working to figure out like, you know, socks, my socks are baggy in the ankle, but they're also baggy in the calf. 
but they're great on the foot, but they're not great on the toe. And I was just working on refining and tweaking and figuring out what I needed. So after I figured that out for myself, I actually wrote down that formula, how I measured my, my leg in different places, my foot in different places, and how to calculate everything. And then I wrote it up and filmed it and put it into a course. So if you're interested in anything like that, I have my Perfect Fit Socks course. I'll put it down below and you can read all about what's included and all of that. It's now um, not a live course. It's all pre-recorded lessons, so you can just watch them on demand at your own pace. And I'm available for questions via the site. Uh, you can comment on there or send me an email. So that's all set up now. It took so much developing, but it really changed how I knit my socks. So now I actually cast on fewer stitches than I ever did before. I used to be a 64 stitch girl, kind of a medium, you know, sock size. And now I do about 56 stitches. And then I actually increase at my heel so that I can have more width and more depth around that heel cup. I'm still doing my favorite Fish Lips Kiss heel by Patty Joy White. It is awesome, I love it. Um, and then I am decreasing after I'm done with my heel to get to a completely different foot count. So here's a tip for anyone who's having fit issues by staying with the same stitch count throughout the entire sock, you can actually do a totally different stitch count in the leg, and then on your foot, you can either go wider or go smaller, just depending on what your actual foot shape needs. And now I'm also doing ergonomic toes, which means my right foot, uh, if this was my big toe, my right foot, um, you know, slants in towards the big toe. I guess both slant in towards the big toe, but they're like mirrors of each other. And that's so nice now to have all that extra fabric in there. It just feels really, really comfy. So I teach all that in my Perfect Fit Socks class, but even then maybe there's, if you're a sock knitter, there's some things you can kind of figure out on your own or maybe just play with. Don't be afraid to play with things. Try new cast-ons, try a different stitch count. Oh, and my top tip is actually measure your gauge and pay attention to the makeup of the yarn because when I knit a sock that has a 75-25 four ply versus an 80-22 ply, I almost have to do completely different socks. I have different stitch counts. Sometimes I have to change my needles because those two yarns, while both sock yarns, behave completely different. All right, enough yammering. I'm going to start with the next bag, even though I haven't quite emptied out this one. I want to get through 35 socks so that I can get through 50 in total. So let's do this bag. I actually see my first pair of socks here on the bottom. That's so exciting. Anyone else still have their first pair of socks? <laughs> I don't know why I hang on to them. I'm usually not very nostalgic with most things, but I do feel like I want to keep my first pair of socks just for fun. I don't wear them. They're kind of itchy and they're definitely too big. All right, let's uh, start the second half timer. Do you think I can make it? I am going to do my absolute best. Okay, these I knit last year at the end of last year, and these are the Cider House Socks by Summer Lee. This is last year's Sockmas colorway from Mandy's Makings. I cannot remember what it's called at all, but it came with two little 50 gram pairs and it was great. All right, this one's gonna be an easy one because I don't know. I don't remember, I don't know. They are very, very beautiful. Oh, wait, I need to make a new pile. Let's do it on this side. <laughs> okay, oh man, I think these are from Olivia and Oliver, or the name that I couldn't remember before from the blue socks. Mm, I don't know what these are called, but I really like these, and see how they're nice and skinny? These are my perfect fit socks. Okay, here's another pair from Malia Made It. This one, oh, what is this one? Uh, I wanna say it was like a fantasy reference, a book reference, but I can't remember exactly what it was. And it was a test knit, probably the last test knit that I ever did. Okay, this is a recent one. These are from Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. This was the 2022 uh, Advent striping skein. I made really tall socks and I just did a slip stitch pattern and I think they look pretty cool. And I think the color name was Advent 2022. Oh, looks like I only have one of these here. <laughs> um, but this is, oh, it just went out of my head. I know the color is called something about donuts and shoot, I can like, I can imagine myself in the yarn store in Oregon buying this yarn right now. 
It will come to me later, but that one's a fail. Okay, these are, I know these, because look how different they are. This is from the same ball of yarn. <laughs> this is Fangirl Fibers. Uh, I think this is a Disney color. I think this came from my Disney Advent 2022, maybe. But yeah, it came to totally different from the inside and outside of the skein. Very wild, super fun. Okay, this is another one where I can totally remember being in the yarn shop in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's called Spun. See all the things I can remember? And I don't remember the dyer, but I believe the color was called Molly. And the dyer had uh, created all these colorways after the people who worked at the shop's pets. And so Molly, I think, was a dog. So there you go. <laughs> it wasn't a pink dog, but I think it was like one of those strawberry blonde dogs. Okay, these are Moon Glow Yarn Company. And these are my sweetheart socks that I designed last year, I think in 2022. So they have little motifs um, and these are like sweet, sweet tart colorways, I think. Very, very fun. Another Malia made it. You can see some themes here. Um, this one I think was uh, Romilda Vane's box of chocolates. So you can see that it's like Valentine tiny with the brown for the chocolate. And this is my pattern. It's called Bobbles and Beezors. It's an older one. Okay, this yarn is from Arkansas Yarn Company. I wanna say it was like one of their anniversary colors or maybe it wasn't, it was like their logo color. It's just called Arkansas Yarn Co. And this is a pattern by um, Maddie, what is her pattern design name? I can't remember, but it's a great pattern. It has like beautiful cables on it. Very lovely, very soft socks. Okay, what else do we have in here? I see a lot of self-striping yarn. This is also Malia made it, although I cannot remember what this one's called. Oh, you know what? These might be my very first sock week color. Oh, no, 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 maybe they're the second year sock week color. Yeah, because I crocheted a pair in this too. So we get double. I get two points for this, right? Malia made it. I think this is sock week 2020, but I don't remember what the colorway name is. Shark on the beach. Tropical Shark, those are really fun. This is another one of my favorite self-striping dyers, Mustache Yarns. I made these many, many years ago, um, early on when I lived in Texas, and this color is called Kama. It used to be called Kama Sutra, but now it's just called Kama, K-A-M-A, -A, and uh, Stacy is still dyeing this. I saw this at SSK just a few weeks ago. Uh, this looks like another mustache. I'm not seeing the second sock anywhere. I need to do some pairing up. I do not know what this one is called, but this is really pretty with like the skinny stripes in there. Love that. We'll need to find the other one. All right. I don't know what this one is either. This might be Suburban Stitcher. I don't know why that feels right. I don't usually have blues from Suburban Stitcher. I usually have pinks, but that feels like a Texas yarn to me. <laughs> Maybe it's another Texas dyer and I'm just getting like Texas vibes off of it. Okay, I'm trying to find pairs. That's why I'm like looking in here. I'm not trying to, to cheat. All right, this is my, I think very first sock pattern and you can barely see it in this crazy yarn, but it's little knits and pearl footballs and these are called the, um, I can't remember, I just blanked. <laughs> I have no idea what this yarn is, but I know that I got it to look like my alma mater UT. Um, so I, they're fun, they've got stripes and everything. Actually, I've got another set of them in here. I also don't remember this one, this is from so long ago, but you can see the little texture of the footballs and the nice twisted rib on the back. So one of my first sock patterns. All right, let's get in here and try to Oh, these are my first socks ever. Oh man, who remembers this yarn? I think this one was Opal. Again, it could be Opal or Regia, I'm not really sure. But this self-patterning stuff was all the rage in about 20, uh, 2008, I think is when I learned to knit socks. And so yeah, these socks are like, math, 15 years old. Wait, is that right? I've been knitting socks for 
a really, really long time. <laughs> I don't know what the colorway is. Oh, these are another pair of my, do I, am I still on the timer? Oh, wow, I've got less than a minute. Okay, this go down memory lane with me is the Cookie A was a really popular sock designer. And these are the monkey socks. And I can remember knitting on these on a road trip. This yarn is something from a bigger yarn company before hand dyed yarn was really popular. It might be Cascade, it might be something else, but I have not worn these in ages, but they are in really good shape. Can I do one more? These are newer, uh, I, they were gifted to me the yarn was gifted to me, but I cannot remember the colorway name. Oh, there we go. I cannot remember the colorway name, um, but I remember knitting these on vacation because they're just so bright and so lovely. And I don't think I've worn these yet. They look really unworn. So maybe I will save these. They're a little shorter and I don't really knit shorter or wear shorter midi socks anymore. I like either shorter than this or longer than this. So these might be a great one to give to someone. Okay, before we count, here's what's still left in bag one. I did a lot better in bag two. Do you think we have 50? <laughs> Over here to my right, I have 15 pairs. So hopefully over here I have 35. It's not really looking like it, but let me give it a final count. It's not 50, <laughs> it's 36. I tried my best and I'm pretty proud of that. I think that's not bad to get through that many socks in a short amount of time. So since I lost at my own game, how about we have a little prize of three more socks? <laughs> I, so I, I picked these out especially because I kind of want to travel down memory lane a little bit. So the first one is socks from the very first sock week. I knew these were in there somewhere. This is Malia made it from sock week 2019. I believe that was the first year. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This past July was our fifth annual sock week, which is the week of sock knitting and crochet. And so this, this is the very first colorway. The one that started it all, Malia was a really big part of that. Okay, then, these are like the craziest socks I think I've ever made. They were knit from a sock blank, which if you haven't seen these before, maybe you've seen them and didn't know what it was. It's a like a rectangular piece of knit fabric. Sometimes it's single stranded, sometimes it's double stranded, and you actually unravel it as you knit. It's not it's not great because it can make really crazy patterns and you have to knit with like wrinkly ramen like yarn. But on the other hand, it's really great because you don't have to wind your yarn to prep. So it's great for emergency cast ons and you can do really fun, like dyers do really fun um, images and stamps and all kinds of stuff on them. So this one was obviously red and green and white for Christmas colors. I made these super tall, but look, they're toe socks. And I do try to wear these every single Christmas because they're just so funny. Look at these. I will never, probably, <laughs> never in my life knit toes again. It's such a pain to pick up like 10 stitches and knit in the round next to another toe. But these are so wild and so funny. So if you wanna to knit toe socks, they're a bit of a pain, but they are hilarious. And then lastly, the Halloween socks that almost made me stop working on self-striping forever. <laughs> These socks are such fun colors and so Halloween-y and actually the green is so neon that it's not really, there we go, it's not really even wanting to represent in the camera, but I could not figure out a repetitive striping pattern for these socks to save my life. If you kind of see there's like, there's medium, hold on, I'm gonna make myself mad all over again, but there's medium, skinny, large, medium, skinny, large. But it took me so long to figure that out and I was going 
bananas. I think at the end I realized that it was actually written on the label what the striping was going to do, but when you first start out it's very hard to see what's happening, especially since I was in that phase of knitting really short legs so I couldn't get, I didn't even get a full repeat in so I couldn't understand it. I was so upset <laughs> when I was making these socks. It was ridiculous and I honestly didn't knit self-striping socks for quite a long time and there's self-striping socks that I'm creating or knitting right now that I almost thought a similar thing was happening and I was I was brought back <laughs> to this time but now we're all good and the socks are all good. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. I love being able to kind of go back and reflect on past projects. Let me know if there's other tours you want to see, maybe of another item. I won't be able to do it for a while because we are starting to travel very, very soon and all my stuff is like packed up here at my parents' house, but maybe in the future I can do a little like garment tour or something like that. I am very much looking forward to purging these socks and we'll have to wait until I'm back, but if you are interested in receiving any of these lesser worn or brand new socks and you know they will fit you or someone you love, again, I'm a women's size eight, my feet are pretty narrow, um, then let me know. Send me an email, I'll be putting you on a list and I will randomly draw someone when I am ready, probably a few someones, because I think I'll have quite a few socks to give away. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!